this is where I am going to be showing you this is going to be a practical Okay, so this video we will cover still going to be CompTIA A plus training practical part and we will install Windows 7 on a hypervisor, hypervisor which is a virtual Windows 7. We're not going to do this on a physical machine. We're going to do this on a virtual environment. This video is conducted by Jay's Tech and Travel on a YouTube channel sponsored by Loyal Tech and Security. If you have any um, any more questions re related to the trainings or any other courses, feel free to visit our website at loyaltechsecurity.com. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell notification icon to be notified for any new videos. So we're going to start off with a hypervisor. XCPNG Center, it is a hypervisor client. I'm going to quickly, very quickly, going to just want to give you a brief example of a, what a hypervisor is, then I'm going to continue that, okay? Bare metal hypervisor is a server, a physical server. So let's say if I do Dell R820. So I just think of it as a machine. This server you usually run, uh, you can run Windows, you can run a lot of other things. You need an operating system. But a bare metal server is that you run a hypervisor which itself is an operating system. What do I mean by that? Microsoft came up with a hypervisor, um, Hyper-V, which you need to install uh, Windows Server or Windows 10 to get that Hyper-V. But that Hyper-V is, 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 is based on the operating system. But this XCPNG is not. VMware ESXi, same thing. It's it's a it's an operating system. It it XCPNG itself is an operating system, which you can run on a bare metal system, which is you can run it on this server. Okay, so this is just to get it out of the way. What exactly is hypervisor? Hypervisor is 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 just a is a uh, an operating system put on directly onto a bare metal system to virtualize uh, other operating system within it so what you see right now xcpng center this is a hypervisor installed on a bare metal server okay it is running a lot of machines over here but today what we're going to do is we're going to create a new vm uh under windows 7. now remember the process um, to install Windows 7 is pretty similar when you uh, install it on a physical device as well. The only difference is, is the first few things we are going to start. So in virtualized environment, we are going to create, uh, click on new VM and you can, you're going to pick the, the flavor of the operating system. In this, Windows 7 is not even available. But in this case, I will pick the lowest operating system, which is Windows 8.1. Now, I know that my ISO I have for Windows 7 is 32-bit. Mine is not 64-bit, so I'm going to make sure that I, I choose 32-bit. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to give it a name. Since it's not Windows 8, I'm going to give it Windows 7 Professional. Okay, it is Pro put that same thing in a description I'm gonna click next where am I installing it from so I already have that library how did I get that library in here please watch my other videos on how to install XCPNG hypervisor okay and that will show you that so I am picking up Windows 7 32-bit professional ISO image this is a installation media think of this as a, I'm just inserting a CD in a physical computer or I'm inserting a USB flash drive 
in a physical computer. Just think of this as that, okay? We're going to keep it the same as BIOS uh, boot because Windows 7 does not work on UE UEFI. So we're going to keep it in BIOS mode. Uh, what server you want to install this on? There's only one server, so we're going to use that. Click Next. How many processors do I want to allocate to this machine? This specific server has 32 processors, 32 virtual uh, processors. So I can assign many processors to this. Windows 7 usually does not require a lot of processors. In this case, maybe I'll just say, okay, uh, give it four virtual CPUs and two sockets with two cores per CPU or four sockets with one core per CPU. So I'll do two core, two sockets. Sockets mean two physical CPU. This will assign two physical CPUs to this operating system. And with two cores per socket, meaning in each CPU, it is going to assign the two cores out of that. Okay, that's what that means. All right, memory, uh, four GB, probably too low. I'm gonna go with eight, eight GB, and then I'm gonna click next. GPU, there is no GPU on this server, so you're going to pass that. All right, now uh, the hard drive. How much hard drive you want to give and where do you want to store this? So I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to click on, I'm not going to install it on data drive because uh, this has very less space, as you can see, 169 GB free. Data 3 has 2.73 terabytes, so it has a lot of space, so I'm going to put it up there. I'm going to increase the size to maybe 50 GB just in case, you know, uh, 24 is still enough, but um, it's going to be cutting it really close. So I'm just going to go with 50 GB. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Next. This server has four network adapters. Um, I am only going to give this Windows 7 one network adapter, which means uh, Network 0 is going to assign the IP address automatically. Click next, make sure everything is correct over here and start the VM automatically as soon as I create, click create now. I should see once this green bar is done, I will see the Windows 7 somewhere listed here. So we will wait. There we go, Windows 7 just popped up. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna go to console. And console is automatically going to boot up. I'm going to make sure I'm going to click on scale so I see everything. Now, everything from here, what you see is exactly how the physical installation would work. What you're seeing right now, it's it's loading the file based off of that ISO image I have provided. The Windows 7 ISO image, it's loading those files and it's preparing to have the Windows 7 installed. Okay, so now Windows 7 uh, installation window, uh, English is good, everything default is fine. Click next. I'm going to click on install now. These are uh, terms, license and terms. Click uh, accept. Next, and this is what I was talking about. As you can see, it says upgrade and custom install. Custom install is a clean install, depending on how you do it. I'll show that in a minute. Upgrade, meaning, let's say if I already have a Windows um, Vista or XP on this system, then I can choose this upgrade option and it will keep all my files, but it will keep Windows XP system files as well as Windows 7 uh, system files. And I, I don't want to do that because it occupies the space and stuff and it's not a clean installation. So I'm going to move with the custom uh, advanced option. Now in custom, since there was no, no operating system installed on that, that's the reason why you don't see any other drives. If there was a, a operating system in, uh, installed on this, I would see multiple drives over here, and then it's up to you how you want to manage it. You can delete all those drives and do a clean installation, or you can just install this operating system onto a different hard drive or a different partition, and it would work. In this case, 
we only have one hard drive which is unallocated meaning it is not being used right now and is it is 50 GB is what I provided so I'm going to allocate it so I'm gonna click on drive options which is advanced it's asking what do you want to do well I want to create a part uh, a, a hard drive so here I have an option I have 51 200 MB which is 50 GB if I want I can make it half which is 21 GB click apply click OK and this is going to create two partitions for me you see partition number two is 20 GB and this unallocated space is still has 29 GB so if I want I can create one more and I can click I can apply everything whatever is here and it will create these third partition so I have two partitions partition number one which is partition called two and partition three the partition number one is a system reserved this is where it is stores the system files the booting the bootable files okay so you can do it this way also another way of doing it is I'm gonna delete all of this see it went back to the allo unallocated space I'm gonna delete this that's also gonna go to the un unallocated space I'm gonna delete this as well and again I got 50 GB okay so I'm gonna click on new I'm gonna utilize the entire 50 GB for the C drive because 50 GB is not much and I'm not really gonna use this system anyway so but anyway so 100 uh, MB is used for system reserve and the rest of the hard drive is used for the partition number two this is where I'm going to install the operating system I cannot install the operating system on this because as you can see as soon as I click on it next option is not available because there's not much room so all right so let's click on uh, partition number two I'm gonna click on next it is automatically going to format that drive okay so this is where it's going to automatically restart Once again, the entire process from um, the last time I mentioned, this is uh, similar uh, to have uh, installation done on the physical device. Uh, you will be following exactly what you see here right now if you were installing Windows 7 on a uh, physical, dev uh, physical device. And this goes, sa this goes same for Windows 8, 10, 11 as well. okay so finally the Windows 7 has been installed remember I have been doing this remotely I'm not physically in front of that hypervisor all of this is being done remotely and um, uh, that could be the reason why of this uh, this lag so anyway you get this window and this is where you can create the username so username I'll create test computer name automatically is test-pc next type in your password whatever password you want whatever hint you want I don't want any hint click next and it's asking for the product key product key is you know to register your 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 operating system with Windows currently I do not have a product key because I'm not gonna be using the system anyway so I'm gonna click automatic automatically activate when I'm online I do not have that so I'm gonna skip this asking uh, the updates I'm gonna say okay for now let's just use recommended setting I'm in Eastern time zone so I'm gonna cl uh, click on Eastern time zone and then the clock is not correct <laughs> let's just change it to 122 there we go click next this is a work network so I'm gonna click on work and it's going to finalize its settings okay 
and this is your Windows 7 completely installed I can already see the network the internet has come on uh, we can quickly take a look CMD go to IP config and as you can see it has assigned the IP address I can ping to Google from here there you go I can ping to Google which means I am connected to the internet now obviously a lot of things uh, will be a little different here because Microsoft has ended the uh, support for this operating system so I might not even be able to get any uh, updates security updates and stuff but you can always try by going to control panel and click on Windows update check for updates and change the settings to automatically install updates I usually don't like it I like to do download updates but let me know let me choose when to install them and click OK and let's check for the updates this is the first thing you want to do after installing the operating system if you are not installing from an image okay yeah so I that's what I, I figured the updates probably not gonna work on this anyway because uh, this is really outdated and uh, Microsoft is not even pushing any updates on these so anyway um, so this is how you install Windows 7 the uh, idea is the same for Windows 8 and 10 as well in other videos I will try to show you that if you if you like but for now this is how you install Windows 7 now if you see here this is still running under the hypervisor all I gotta do I don't need this machine anymore so I can just shut it down and then I can remove it all right so I see that red stop sign here so that means this machine has been stopped uh, in order to remove it just right click click on delete uh, click the uh, delete the virtual disk as well and that's it Windows 7 is deleted basically I sold my computer already so this was a quick video for how to install Windows 7 on a uh, on a hypervisor using a virtualized uh, machine I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions any comments any concerns please put them in the uh, comment section if you like the video uh, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell notification icon um, until then I'm going to end this video hopefully I will see you in the next session